the frame that I'm going to look at here has a horizontal member and a member that goes at an angle of 45 degrees. This is uh, 30 inches, I'm sorry, 30 feet. And this is uh, 40 feet. This is fixed here. And this is fixed here. So there are two members and uh, I have a distributed load applied here downwards and this is 1000 pound per foot we are given that e is uh, 30 times 10 to the power 6 psi the area of the members both of them 100 square inch and i the moment of inertia is 1000 inch to the power four. And uh, when we wanna solve a problem like this, a frame, usually we wanna find the internal forces or draw normal shear and moment diagrams. So we wanna find the internal forces in the frame. Usually this involves draw N, V and M diagrams. So the first step in order to solve this problem, I'm gonna establish my global axis as usual, X horizontal and Y the vertical. Is that fixed angle on the right side there? Correct, sorry for the mess. I will clean it up no. after that. <laughs> Okay, next we want to create our mesh. Of course, we choose the type of element. Clearly, you see here, these are, or this is a rigid connection. So this angle of 135 degree is gonna remain 135 degree after the formation. That's the point of a frame. And uh, again, uh, you see here, I have a transverse load with respect to this element. But this transverse load has a component that is axial compared to this member at an angle. Now this member at an angle is also putting an axial component on this horizontal member. So this is why frame elements need to handle axial forces. An important remark, if you're using a commercial software package, typically they would refer to a frame element as a beam element. So many of you have used ANSYS, for example, and we kept using, those of you who took advanced machine design, we use beam elements. This beam element was capable of handling axial, shear, bending, as well as torsion, but we called it a beam element. Okay, so I hope you can uh, understand the difference here. All right. And again, the elements that we are driving here are the simplest form of elements. Many of the elements that are used in the commercial packages would even have three nodes instead of two. And they allow for more degrees of freedom. So, so does it not affect um, the computation? What you do in computation? One 
Yes, if the elements are not the same, it can be slightly different, right? Okay, so I, I'm gonna start here by creating my mesh. So I'm gonna start by labeling nodes and elements. So I'm gonna come here and say, I'm gonna make this node one, this is node two, and this is node three. Next, I'm gonna mark the local axis for each member. So for this member, I'm gonna have here a member, let's call it uh, member one. And uh, I'm gonna set my X prime to be going from one to two. And for two, three, and this is X one prime. For this here, I'm gonna have this as my second element. And here I'm gonna have X two prime. Now, uh, why is this important? Because this will help me identify this angle. So for number one, theta one is equal to 45 degrees. Sorry, I forgot to write it. I said it, but I never wrote it. So that's theta one. For element two, theta two is zero, right? So for element two, theta two is equal to zero. So like uh, we did before, if we want to organize our work in a table, I can come here. Yes. Assuming you have table two as maybe a certain angle, which is not zero, and you end up having two values of theta. I say, assuming you have theta two as not being zero, I end up having two values of theta. So which, how do you now differentiate it when you come to using the sign to cosine? Or you, you so I'm going to call one like theta here. Okay. For example, I'm going to put like 45 degrees for element one. Okay. I'm going to put zero degrees. Okay. Right? And then I'm going to find the cosine, the sine, the cosine squared, and the sine squared, as well as CS. So for element one, for 45 degrees, the cosine would be the square root of two over two, same for the sine. And then when uh, I square it, I get a half, I get a half and I get a half. For theta equal zero, the cosine is a zero, the sine is a one. So cosine squared is a zero, sine squared is a one and cosine si sine is a zero. It is also important to identify the lens for element one. So for element one, the lens here, if this is 30 feet, I will have 30 times the square root of two. And if I wanna have consistent units, I'm gonna multiply this by 12 to go to inches. So I have here a number in inches and for L2, I simply have the 40 inch, I'm sorry, 40 feet times 12. So we have a number in inches. The next uh, interesting one here is when I look at element two, I have loads between nodes. So we wanna find the equivalent nodal loads. You are right, sorry, I messed it up here. I switched, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry for that. I'm sorry, good. Yeah, okay. So the equivalent nodal loads on element two. So I have here uh, element two that has the 1000, Pound per foot. If this is node two and this is node three, we know we're going to have the loads applied like this and the bending moments.
Okay. So now, uh, if this is uh, node two, this would be I can call this f node two y, and this is f node three y. This would be m node three, and this is m node two. Where f node two y is equal to f node three y is equal to w l over two. And uh, M note two is equal to M note three with these directions, of course, and they are equal to W L squared over 12. If, if you do the numbers, you'll find that uh, here I get uh, 20,000 pounds. And uh, for the moment I get uh, minus, if, so you do the mass and do also the units, we can be looking at 1,600 kip inch. So this is uh, 20,000 pounds, which is the same as 20 kips. Now, uh, using the sine cosines as well as the length, I trust that you can write the stiffness matrix for each of these elements here. So we can write a K1 and K2. So write the element stiffness matrices with respect to x, y. So we're gonna have a K1, that is a six by six, and a K2, that is a six by six. Now, uh, of course, this uh, K1 is gonna correspond to degrees of freedom. If I start marking the degrees of freedom here, I will have U1, V1, and V1. At two, we're gonna have a U2, V2, and V2. And at three, I'm going to have U3, V3, and V3. So K1 is going to be relating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And K2 would have 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9 degrees of freedom. Right? When I assemble together, so assemble the global stiffness matrix, uppercase K, where this K is equal to the sum from I equal one to two of the K I, here, like we did before. So you end up getting a nine by nine. The global stiffness equations are gonna relate F to D via, oops, the global stiffness matrix K. So these are nine by one nine by one and this is a nine by nine if i apply the boundary conditions i have here a fixed support and i have here a fixed support so boundary condition would tell me u1 
equals to V1 equals to V1 equals to U3, V3, and V3 is equal to zero. So yes, we have total nine degrees of freedom, but six of them are constrained. So when I apply my boundary conditions, I will get modified equations. How many? Three. And we can solve these modified equations for U2, V2, V2. But I would like to take a minute to define this F since we have a distributed load, because this could be helpful uh, also for beam applications. So if I want to write my F, which is a nine by one. I'm looking at the applied forces as well as the equivalent nodal forces. So I will come here and look at the fixed support. I'm gonna have an R1X. I'm gonna have an R2, I'm sorry, R1Y. And I'm gonna have an M1. And we do not have any other than the support reactions as external forces. Okay, when I look at node two, I do not have nodal forces applied, but I have the equivalent nodal loads that we just drove here, drove here. So when I look at this, now I'm gonna need to apply these as the nodes, at the nodes. So I, they, they are both going downwards. So I'm gonna have, I don't have anything in the axial direction. So I'm gonna have here a zero, but then corresponding to V2, I have this F note 2Y, which is a 20 kip going downward. So I have minus 20 kip. Then I have M note 2. Should this be positive or negative? Negative. So I have here a minus 1600. Then I go to note 3. At note 3, and this is an interesting one because I have an F note and I also have an F reaction. So now I'm gonna add these two together. So I'm gonna have an R3X, good, minus, really? Because it's going downwards, right? Minus 20. No, 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 not in the X direction, not yet. Yeah, this is R3Y minus 20, right? And finally, M3, and here is this a plus or a minus? Plus, plus 1600. Yeah, I know this is not gonna affect your modified equations because with your mod modified equation, you're simply using these. So for the modified global stiffness equations, you're gonna end up having a zero, a minus 20, and a minus 1600 equal to, and you're gonna have this uh, three by three multiplied by U2, V2, and theta two. And uh, you can solve for U2, V2, and theta two. And you will get, if you wanna check this uh, at home, 
like 0 0.0033 times 10 to the minus three inches, 0 0.0097 times 10 to the minus three inches. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there is a minus sign here and minus 0 0.0033 times 10 to the minus three radians. So these are the displacements. What are we gonna do with these displacements? These are displacements with respect to the global axis. So if I wanna find the element forces, I'm gonna need to transform these to write them with respect to the local axis. So for uh, element forces with respect to local axis, and of course this is going to be uh, for element one uh, is where we have to do the transformation. For element two, it happens that the local axis is oriented along the same global axis. So for element one, you're gonna start by finding D prime equal to T times T. Oops, okay. So I trust you can write this T and uh, find uh, D, of course, uh, this uh, D that you're gonna be using is gonna be three zeros and then U2, V2 and T, uh, V2. So you're gonna find a D prime. Then you can use this D prime with the element stiffness equation. Now you're gonna be finding F prime is equal to K prime times D prime. And what you're gonna find here are gonna be using this equation, are gonna be the normal force at one, the shear force at one, and the bending moment at one. So I can use these numbers directly to draw the shear and moment diagram. The tricky one is gonna be element two. So element two, even though D prime is equal to D, of course, for the corresponding degrees of freedom, remember these are six by one, right? And uh, your F prime that you're gonna solve for equals to K prime, oops, this is a square matrix, times this D prime, but this F prime, is equal to so when i solve for f prime you're uh, you're going to find that this is the equivalent element forces so when i solve this equation i'm really finding the equivalent element nodal forces, I still have to subtract the equivalent loads that we applied at these nodes, okay? So when you solve this equation, this F prime that you're gonna get, let's say it's gonna be, uh, I, I really wanna call it F E F prime E, because we're gonna get, uh, I'm just gonna put some numbers so you can make sense out of it, 20.6, minus 2.62, minus 826.85, minus 18, and uh, 2.62, and minus 413.4. So this is what I get from the equations. 
I want to say that this is equal to, uh, th these are the numbers I, uh, I got here. If I want to find the normal, the uh, uh, internal forces, I want to solve for F2 prime X, F2 Y prime, M2 uh, F3, x and f prime 3y and m3 of course for the moments i'm not uh, very concerned about prime or not because it doesn't matter but these are going to be equal these internal forces are going to be equal to what we calculated from the element equations minus any applied nodal loads so of course in the x direction we have a zero but then here i have the minus two point uh, six two and I have here, but I'm gonna subtract, I look here at F note two Y. So I'm gonna subtract a minus 20. I'm looking here at the 826.85, but I'm gonna subtract the moment that we added here. And this moment is negative. So I'm still gonna have a minus 1600. F prime three X is not affected. So I have here the minus 18, but F prime three Y, I got a 2.62. I'm still gonna subtract a negative 20. And for the moment, I got minus 413.4. I'm gonna subtract this moment, which is a positive 1600. So this is how we calculate the element forces. Of course, I uh, trust you can uh, do the math. Sorry for running late, but you get here 20 uh, 20.61, 17.4, 713.4, 18.01, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 22.62, 